Good morning, my friends. Today is Tuesday of the 28th week in Ordinary Time. It's also day 33 of Be Formed. The days are flying by. Yesterday, uh, we spent the day in Assisi. We visited the older upper part of the city, da, and we visited the Basilica of St. Clair, Santa Chiara, and also the Basilica of St. Francis, of course, San Francesco. And then we went down to the, we spent some time viewing the old city, which is beautiful. One of my favorite places on earth. Definitely a place that you want to put on your bucket list. And then uh, we went down to the lower uh, part of Assisi, the newer part, and visited Santa Maria delle Angeli, uh, St. Mary of the Angels, where the Portiuncula, the place where uh, St. Francis lived and the place where he died actually as well. So... Uh, Powerful day, the people had, pilgrims had a great time. Uh, so today we're heading to uh, Kesha to visit uh, St. Rita of Kesha. And then we're gonna make our way back to Rome for our uh, final evening together. And then tomorrow morning we head to the airport. We'll be returning to Chicago. Uh, God willing, there's no delays. Please pray for us and our travels. So what I'd like to talk about today, a little bit from uh, the first reading and then the gospel. The, the first reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 1. And the, the first line really struck me. Brothers and sisters, I am not ashamed of the gospel. And it really hit me like, have I ever been ashamed of the gospel? Have I ever kind of not been proud to be a follower of Jesus Christ? Um, he goes on to say, it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. Like there's power in the good news that, you know, God created us in his image and likeness. He has a great plan for our life. We're sinners and sin separates us from God and we can't save ourselves. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to, to pay the ransom uh, from our slavery to sin and uh, opened up the gates of heaven when he ascended into heaven. He rose from the dead, ascended into heaven. And then that demands a response. So first thing today is to ask yourself, have I ever been ashamed of the gospel? Do I believe that it is life-changing? Do I believe that there's no better way to live than to follow Jesus Christ? If I don't believe that, uh, there's a likelihood that I'm going to compromise the gospel. I'm going to not speak when I should, and maybe say things that I shouldn't say. But if I'm convinced, absolutely convinced, that there's no better way to live a, a life than to follow Jesus, then I'm much more likely to, to speak up. In that vein, we have in the gospel today, St. Luke uh, chapter 11, 37 to 41. So a Pharisee invited Jesus, invited Jesus to dine at his home. Jesus enters, reclines at the table, the Pharisee is amazed to see that he did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. The Lord said to him, O oh, you Pharisees, although you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, inside you're filled with plunder and evil, you fools. Did not the maker of the outside also make the inside? But as to what is within, give alms, and behold, everything will be clean for you. So the first thing to notice is, you know, they're focused on this external laws and I remember when I first became Catholic and even before when I went to Catholic high school, I was maybe observing the laws of liturgy. You know, I'd, I'd stand and sit uh, whenever everybody else did. I'd kind of go through the motions. Um, outwardly, I was doing the right things, but inwardly, my heart was far from God. It wasn't until later I had this deep inner conversion that I started to realize that these these laws of the church, these rules are not meant to you know, take the fun out of life, but they're actually meant to lead us deeper into a relationship with Jesus. And so, you know, do I focus on the external more than the internal? So a few things to uh, focus on here. Um, we can focus on getting the sacraments without allowing the grace to transform our hearts. So do we check a box when we go to mass or go to confession? Or is it an encounter with the living God? Um, we can do all the right things at Mass. We can genuflect, kneel, stand. We can put our money in the basket while, while not engaging our heart in the relationship with the Lord. And the last thing is we can follow the Ten Commandments pretty mechanically. Um, 
you know, I haven't killed any. I, I have people who will say that in confession. Father, well, at least I've never killed anybody. Like, good for you. That's a start, you know. Just like the, the rich young man, you know, follow the commandments. I've done that. Now, Jesus says, go sell what you have, give it to the poor and follow me. I want to have this deep, intimate relationship with you. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the good news of the gospel. Help us not to be ashamed of the gospel. Help us to develop a deep relationship with, with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And not just go through the motions or check the boxes, but to know that all that we say and do should be and to glorify you and deepen our intimate relationship with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, and uh, we will see you tomorrow.